this week I have a very weighty word. The Lord's been talking to me about some things and I would like to pass them on to you. And I want to start with a question. If you do what is right for the wrong reasons, is it accepted by God? Let me repeat this question. If you do what is right for the wrong reasons, is it accepted by God? And I want to quote a verse from Proverbs 17, 3. The fining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold. But the Lord tries the heart. It's not about what we say. You know, Jesus said, many will come in that day and say, Lord, Lord. And he'll say to them, I never knew you. It's not about what you say. It's about your heart. Because God looks at your heart. God gives us a new heart. When we're born again, He gives us a new heart. And we need to realize that gift that God gives us. Because just like any other gift, you can take your, your, your new heart and fill it up with all other things of the world and then you're back in the same boat that you were at the beginning. And um, I was going to read this a little bit later, but I want to turn to this right now. In Matthew chapter 13, verses 45 and 46, he's talking about parables. He's, he's in chapter 13, it's a whole bunch of parables that he was teaching um, the people. And in verse 45 and 46, it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, whom when he found one pearl of a great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. When you come to Jesus and you realize that everything comes from him and everything comes from 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 him creating it we know in Genesis 1 it talks about that that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and then in John 1, it says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. By who? By the Word. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. So, we see that God created everything and He loves us so much that even though we transgressed, 
he wants to bring us back to himself that he sent his son and he gives us a new life and a new heart i mean it says in um it says in 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 scripture that everyone in christ is a new creation all things are passed away and behold all things become new so if the old is passed away and all things become new that means we have a new point of view we have a new understanding we have a new um purpose in life and that's to serve the lord and that's the pearl that we're talking about the pearl of great price because all of us are looking for the reason for life why are we here everybody thinks of that even people who are um don't believe in god and and um they they ponder the meaning of life and they try to make sense of it and they try to understand it and they can't because they're not looking where they need to look but for those who are looking and they find this because it says in verse 45 that the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking goodly pearls he's searching he's looking for something he's looking for something real he's looking for something different and then in verse 46 it says when he found one pearl of great price he went and sold all that he had and bought it he took all that he had all his possessions to purchase that pearl that was of great price to him and the question that we need to ask ourselves is this pearl that we have the 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 sacrifice of 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 Jesus Christ the love of the father the things that 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 um he gives us his Jesus gives us his righteousness and he cleanses us of our sins and makes us righteous before him is this of such a great price that everything else is secondary because that's what Jesus said Jesus said if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness then all these things will be added unto you what are those things he was talking before then about clothing about food about things that we need in this life but the kingdom has to come first <clears throat> the kingdom is the thing that's more important than anything else and talking about the pearl we go back to um what we were talking about the question if you do what's right for the wrong reasons is it accepted by God we see that God looks at the heart we can do things that may in the world seem like a nice thing to do but is there an underlying reason why someone does a certain thing there was um jesus was speaking and he said one time when when you have a a a party don't invite people that can invite you back you get paid back for that because they have a party then they invite you but invite the whole the whole the blind the maimed those people that can't pay you back because your father will bless you. 
See, it's not about getting something back from somebody. It's about giving from the heart, not, ex not expecting anything back. Because usually when we give something, we expect it back. We expect something back. But that isn't the love that comes from the Father. That's not the love that comes from Jesus. He gave his life <clears throat> so that we could have life. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go to Matthew 6. And I'm going to read like 18 verses. And I may stop periodically to say, say some things. And I want to talk about this question. Doing what's right for the wrong reasons. So it says in chapter 6, verse 1, Take heed that ye do not your arms before men, to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Now he's talking about rewarding us for, for doing alms. But the thing about alms he's saying is when you do alms, don't let anybody else know that you're doing it. Verse 2 says, Therefore, when thou does thy arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, because that's what they wanted. They wanted people to see what they were given. They were blowing trumpets before them. And verse 3 says, But when you do your arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Meaning, don't let anybody else know. When you're doing something, and you're doing, you're giving alms, <clears throat> it's not so that you can get pats on your back from other people. You're doing it because it's the right thing to do. It's, it's in your heart to do. You don't do it to receive a reward. You do it because you feel like the Father is, or the Holy Spirit is leading you to do it. And it's, it's let's repeat verse 3. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth that thy arms may be in secret. And the Father which sees in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And it's not about receiving a reward from the Father either, even though you will receive a reward from the Father. Because he sees everything. He sees what you do. He sees the sacrifices that you make. He sees when you don't have enough money and you give it to somebody anyway because they need it more. He sees that. It's not like he's just not paying any attention. He sees what you do. And he will reward you for it. And when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. They do it in front of people so that people can see how holy they are. They pray and they have these long prayers and I, the, we call them King James prayers. <clears throat> All of a sudden their language changes. And they start saying, thee, thou, and thy. 
that's just show. Verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father, which is in secret. And the Father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do. For they think that they should be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. Then the question comes and arises, well then why do we have to say anything? <laughs> because we're commanded to. And our whole prayer shouldn't be just things that we need or things that we want or things that we desire. But it's, it's, it's a conversation with the creator of the universe. As it says in verse 9, After this manner therefore pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He talks about worship first. Worship. Our Father, hallowed or holy be your name. You start with worship. And this isn't like, this isn't a, uh, a manual like, oh, step one, you do this. Step two, you do this. Prayer should be a casual as casual as you would speak to a friend. Though you're speaking, we're supposed to come boldly before the throne of grace, but come humbly and with a contrite heart. But we should come and be real with the Father. If you're not real with Him, you don't think He knows when you're being real or when you're just playing a game. He knows when you're playing a game. He knows your heart. We've seen in Proverbs 17.3 that the Lord tries the hearts. He tries your heart. He knows what's in your heart. And if you're just going to pray just to, well, that's what the Word says, so that's what I'm going to do. And that's what the, the, the children of Israel were doing, they were doing the law, and they were like, well, I, I fulfilled my vow for today, I, I did my sacrifice for today, now it's my time, now I can do what I want. And they would worship other gods, and they would um, have adulterous affairs, and they would cheat and steal and do all this stuff. And then the next day they would offer a, a sacrifice and say, well, I got it covered. I covered it. But God doesn't want us living like that. He died on the cross not to just forgive us of our sins. He died on the cross so that we can live a holy, righteous life before him. Because old things are passed away. That means thought, thought life also. Thought life is passed away. It says in Romans um, 12, 2, Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, when we get born again, our mind needs to be changed. Because the stuff that we used to do, that we used to see, that we used to be a part of, we no longer are a part of that world. We have been taken out of this world and brought back as ambassadors. We are ambassadors to Christ and we're telling people, 
you need to be a part of the heavenly realm that we are a part of and I'll show you how you can get there. And we show them through, through uh, our life being pandered after Christ. So we start off with praise. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So we're believing that God's will in heaven will be revealed on the earth. Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Now that's our needs. Give us our needs. Please, give us our needs, our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. A lot of people like to pass over this verse because they have things that they won't let go. They have things that they've been... That, that, that have been stuck in their craw for so long and they won't give up and they won't um, give in and they, they remember what so-and-so did so long ago or what um, was done when they were a little kid and that's why I'm like I am right now. God said, when you come to him, old things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. And what I'm saying in the spirit is you need to forgive. And not just say, okay, yeah, I forgive. But to forgive from the heart because God don't look at your words. He looks at your heart. He knows when you're playing a game. He knows when you're, when, when you're being real. Because he knows your heart. He knows you better than you know yourself. I know some people... I know some people who... They, they thought they had forgiven someone for something they did and they realized that they were still harboring... Um, hurt and and anger and resentment and they were still offended and they had to let all of get all that go you can actually get yourself sick by holding on to things like that and it says lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Don't lead us into temptation. Don't, don't give us the ability to see temptation and not even go near it. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Ends with praise too. Ends with praise to God, begins with praise of God, ends with praise of God. And then you be real with the Father. Be real with God. Be real with Him. And, and ask Him to change your heart if there's something wrong in it. If there's something that you did or something, ask Him for forgiveness. And it says in verse 14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. God forgave us of all our sins because of Jesus Christ and His blood on the cross. Yet someone can do something in your life and, and you'll never forget 
what they did, what they said, why they said it, or what they did, or, or, or whatever. It's time to let it go. If Jesus can humble himself to die a death on the cross, I think the least we could do is be able to um, overcome what someone said about us or someone lying about us or stuff like that. It's, it's, it's not worth hanging on to holding something over their head. It's time to come and and to and in forgiveness forgive. And then it says, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites, as a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fast, anoint thy head, wash thy face, that thou will appear unto men to fast. Uh, appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret, and the Father which is in secret, that seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. A lot of people, when they fast, they, they put on this big act they and some people don't brush their teeth because they're afraid to swallow the water and then they say oh i broke my fast you know god understands you know brush your teeth because when when you fast your breath begins to stink okay just please you know wear get dressed take a shower please you know don't walk around oh woe is me i'm fasting oh you know i'm fasting today oh pray for me i'm fasting why are you doing this you you just you know what you're doing you have your reward right there that's your reward because everybody's saying oh he's so so holy he's fasting or they'll say oh look the guy's praying he always prays he always prays every sunday he always prays these long prayers and and holy prayers he's such a man of god or um oh he always gives a lot he always gives extra money and 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 gives and 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 checks and and he always gives a lot of money and they always talk about how much money he gives the guy already got his reward. These people already got their reward. Jesus said that you do your alms, you pray, you fast in secret. So what, the question is, what is your motive? What's your motive? And, and, and that's, that's what's your, what's your heart? That's what we were, that's the question. The question is, if you do what's right for the wrong reasons, is it accepted by God? No, it's not, because God looks at the heart. And he looks at the motive. And motive is something such as a need or a desire that causes a person to act. Just like the person, just like we read that, that um, we, we read that parable about the the pearl of great price. That was something, a need or a desire. His motive was to get that pearl. And motive is something such as a need or a desire that causes a person to act. It caused him to sell everything he had to possess that pearl. And we have something that's more precious And we don't treat it that way. We treat it like a get-out-of-jail-free card. We treat it as something that, that we um, can use when we mess up. Because everybody messes up, right? 
Everybody sins. That's why we need Jesus. And John said, I write these things unto you that you sin not. That's the rule. Once you're born again, once you get saved, Jesus cleanses you of your sins. And then you follow him. And he wrote, and John wrote, so that you would sin not. But then he says, but, the exception, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. So we have that advocate. But it's not like, well, you know, I can do what I want. And then I'll just ask God for forgiveness. You don't think that God knows your heart? He knows you better than you know yourself. And you're only deceiving yourself if that's what you think. It's time to read your word and be changed. And not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now remember the question, if you do what is right for the wrong reasons, is it accepted by God? So what if we do what's right and we accept Christ and we... Um, say the prayer and we ask God to come in and to change us but we do it for the wrong reasons what are the wrong reasons selfishness greed what do we hear about salvation oh you can have eternal life oh you can have God's going to fix everything for you if you come to him, he's going to take care of everything. He's going to bless your finances. And he's going to make it so that you are, that you can have anything you want. And it, they, we, it's like almost like we're trying to sell something to them. And, and you hear this when pastors are, are talking about, salvation and all the perks that salvation gives you oh you can have this oh you can have that and we go yeah well well that doesn't sound like a bad deal that sounds like a good deal I just say this prayer and God gives me everything I want sounds good to me but that's not what it means. We're going to go to Matthew 16. Because a lot of people, a lot of people think that way. A lot of people think that it's like, well, you know, I need to, like I have a financial problem. Oh Lord, bless me with a new job. I don't like this job. Give me a new job. Oh, I don't like, uh, like, I need more finances. Uh, bless me financially. Uh, bless me um, with this and bless me with that. And it's like, oh, it, it, and prayer becomes almost like a little kid going to Santa Claus. And when Santa Claus asked you, have you been a good boy or a good girl this year? Little kid's going to go, yeah, I was a good boy, a good girl. And this is what I want. And they have a list. And they'll go, I want this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And this is what we do with God. We go to God and we sit down and God says, you know, and God doesn't ask us if we're a good boy or a good girl, but he knows our hearts so he ain't going to ask that question because he knows what's in your heart anyway. He knows what you're going to pray before you say it. And then we say all the stuff that we want. 
and then we put an amen at the, we say, oh Lord, in the beginning, and in Jesus' name. You got to say in Jesus' name, because if you don't say in Jesus' name, then the prayer don't work, see? There's, there's a way that you got to do it. You got to say in Jesus' name. You know what? This is all like stuff that, that people do, and they think there's formulas, and they think... And all God wants is for you to talk to him and be real. You don't think he understands that you're discouraged? You don't think he don't understand that you don't understand scripture or something? You come to him. That's what humility is. Coming to him and saying, God, you know, I don't know this stuff. God, I'm, I'm, I'm discouraged. I need some help. And then you look in the Word and you find what God says about you and you start believing what the Bible says. If, you're, if, if you are hearing things that are contrary to what the Bible says, you're being deceived. This is truth. The Word of God is truth. And we need to accept that. But when you accept Christ, which is the right thing to do, but you do it for the wrong reasons, is it really salvation? Think about this. You ask Christ into your heart and you say, oh, you know, when you get baptized and you go to church and you do all this stuff, but for the wrong reasons. For, so you can get what you want to get. Why do, you, why do you do things in the church? Are you trying to make a name for yourself? Or are you serving the Lord because the Lord wants you to do this particular ministry? And in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, it says, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The first thing you need to do if you're going to follow Jesus is deny yourself. And we don't hear that from the pulpit. We hear, come to Jesus, and he'll forgive you of your sins, and you'll have eternal life. And that may be true, but that's not the whole truth. Because in order to come to him, you need to deny yourself and pick up your cross. Then you can follow him. Paul said, Follow me as I follow Christ. If he ain't following Christ, you shouldn't be following. He said, if, you, if, if I'm not following Christ, you shouldn't be following me. And a lot of us do that. We'll see someone who's really on fire for the Lord and, and loving God and everything. And he looks like, and you say, wow, man, I want to be like him. Instead of saying, wow, I want to be like Jesus. Let me turn to this verse real quick. 
I wasn't going to go to this verse, but I'm going to go to this verse anyway, because I think like where we are right now, Hebrews chapter 12, and it says, it says, he just got done talking about faith and all the people in the Bible who had faith and they believed and trusted in God, what faith is in chapter 11. Then it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lie aside every weight and the sin which does easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. This is the kicker right here, verse 2, looking unto Jesus. Not looking unto brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so or pastor this or pastor that. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. You look to Jesus. If someone falls, you don't fall with them because you're looking to Jesus. Jesus don't fall. But if you look at someone else and you lift them up as an idol and they fall, you're going to fall with them. Don't let that happen. Don't let the devil dupe you. Don't be deceived. Look unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. He's whom we should be looking at. And we should be re-examining re our salvation. Not to say that we're not born again, but to make sure that we, we, we're born again and, and we're, we're, we're following Christ for the right reasons. And not what He could do for us. It's not about what He could do for us. Though he does everything for us. I can't even get up in the morning if it wasn't for him getting me up. But it's all about giving our lives to him. Because he gave his life. Jesus gave his life for us. And we look to him. Because he's the author and the perfecter of our faith. He's the one who gave us the faith in the first place and he's the one that perfects it. You need to trust in that. You need to trust in what Jesus did for you and give yourself wholly to him. And that doesn't mean that you go, um, that you just like all day, like, like the monks do, go up into a mountain somewhere and, and, and just like get away from everything. That's not what that means. It just means living a Christ, Christ-like life. You see movies of Christ and it always looks like Christ is like someone who just like, oh, and he's like going around and, and he's always uh, perfectly serious. Jesus laughed. Jesus loved. Jesus did things, you know, that, you know, he had fun. But he always had that Christ-likeness about him. He always had that God. But, but we act like when we go to heaven, you always see those cartoons when, when they go to heaven. It's like, like harps and, and you're floating on a cloud and doing nothing. And, and that's not, I don't think that's the way it is. I think that we we need to there are times when we're 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 not being serious when we need to be serious and then there's times when we're serious when we just need to 
take a step back and like like laugh at herself because like some things are funny I mean you know <laughs> I mean I laugh at myself all the time and just the way I talk it's the way I talk sometimes is is to me I, I can't listen to myself <laughs> I'm uh, you know it's it's hard for me to listen to myself but but I do it but I it's it's hard for me to do so but re-examine it's the it's not there's nothing wrong to examine your your life in Christ to see why you're doing things or what your motive is that's really what this message is about today it's about motive what's your motive God looks at the motive he doesn't look at what you say or what you do really it's 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 the motive because here were people who were fasting they were praying they, they we read in Matthew 6 they they were doing alms but they were doing it for the wrong reasons don't do things because you are forced to do them because you think that you'll get a brownie point or you'll get a sticker like there's a sticker book in heaven oh he went to church today get one star and oh he put extra in the offering plate that's another star that God doesn't do that <laughs> he's not gonna love you any more than he loves you right now and he's not gonna love you any less than he loves you right now So the bottom line is, as we close in prayer, and we say, Father, help us to check our motives. Help our motives to be pure, that our heart would be pure. Create in us a pure heart and renew a right spirit within us, Father. Speak to us, guide us, lead us, and we bless your name in the mighty name, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, in which every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Amen. <laughs>